All right. Howdy, Cornerstone Chapel. So excited to be with you today. I want to welcome all those that are here on site. I want to welcome all those that are joining us online right now. Welcome to church today. Man, I'm just uh, really excited about what God is doing. And I just think it'd be appropriate right now um, if we could just give some thanks to our worship and tech team for leading us into worship today. Guys, thank you so much. That was just amazing. And I want to just uh, call all of our small group leaders that are here that are planning on being introduced today. Just going to give you a minute to come on up and join me up here on the platform. If you are leading, hosting, facilitating a small group, come on up. We are going to introduce our small group leaders to you today. Um, <clears throat> you know, small groups are a humongous value to us here at Cornerstone Chapel. And we are what we're calling right in the middle of small group sign-up times where uh, we have the list of small groups available. And I thought it would be good um, that we just took some time in our service um, because many times when we're just looking at a list of words on paper or you're looking at a screen, um, many people are new or because we have multiple services, sometimes uh, it's hard to put a face to a name. So this is what this is all about right now. We just want to introduce our leaders real quick. Uh, they're just going to come up and say their name and what small group they're doing and what day it's on. And guys, before you start, I just want to say thank you so much, one, for leading groups. Look at this. This is amazing. And two, thanks for being up on the platform today because I know some of you don't mind the platform at all. But I know some of you would rather not be up on the platform right now. So if you're being stretched in that way, thank you. Thank you. Extra special thanks to you. But um, guys, I think it's so important that we get to know our small group leaders. Uh, so guys, take it away. Deb, looks like you're first. Good morning, everyone. My name is Deb Giamo, and I'm going to be doing an Exodus group on Saturday morning at 930 for anyone. And that is going to be virtual through Zoom. I'm Melanie Gardner, and I'll be doing a women's small group on Thursday evenings. It's for all of my fellow night owls. It's at 8.30 p.m. after you put the kids to bed, and it'll be um, using Zoom as well. I guess I'm the first live group. <laughs> <laughs> Wednesday evenings, uh, 7 o'clock. It's at my house. Uh, we're going through the Exodus book. So. Thanks, Ray. I'm Mike Gardner. I uh, just want to let you know a couple, but let you know about a couple next gen um, classes that we have. Is we have a uh, for high schoolers and for junior high, we meet on Wednesday nights. We have a service, and then we break up into small groups. And we also have for first through fourth uh, grade students, uh, Hope Cornett, who is our children's director. She oversees them on Wednesday night as well. And high school and junior high will be going through Exodus, and Hope will be going through something else. I am Rich Kasouf, and we have a Wednesday morning men's study at CMJ's restaurant, which is now closed down for a week, another week. Uh, we also have a Saturday morning men's Bible study in the old library down at the other end of the um, church, and it's at 9 o'clock in the morning, uh, and we're studying John right now, and we're going to go on to some other books. We also do, uh, with Pastor Deb and Pastor Mark, Wednesday mornings at 8 o'clock, we have a Zoom prayer time. Saturday mornings, that's right, Saturday, not Wednesday. Um, Saturday mornings at, at uh, 8 o'clock, and you have to contact Pastor Deb, and she'll send you a link, and you can pray for an hour or listen or whatever. Thanks. That's great. Good morning. I'm Angie Sullivan. I'm a part of a young adult small group called Free Fuel, and we meet weekly on Tuesday nights in Medina at 7 o'clock. Uh, right now, we're finishing up a book by John Piper, and this Tuesday, we're going to be deciding what we'll be focusing on um, the next coming months. So you can contact me or Luke Allen, who's also a part of it. Thank you, Luke. Hi, I'm Jane Reedy. I'm leading a group on Exodus. It's Wednesdays at 1230, and it will be in person. Hi, um, I'm Terry Rockhorst. I'm leading uh, the Exodus group, and I'm doing a women's study. It will be in the old library room on Sundays at 1230. 
I'm Lori Sexton. This is Michelle Stacy. We meet on Saturday mornings at 9.30 here at the church, and we will be doing Exodus. Hello, my name is Barbara Uriam, and I lead a concerned person group here at the church the first and third Thursday at 7 p.m. Yeah, my name is Ron Bell, and... Uh, Dan Birch and I are leading a Exodus group on Thursday nights at 7 o'clock here in the cafe. Hi, my name is Mike Bricker. This is my lovely wife, Joan. We'll be hosting a small group Thursday evening at our home, you know, and it, the group will be studying a, a book called Identification where we'll learn, you know, what our rights and privileges and gifts are as born-again believers. Uh, good morning. I'm Gary Sossman. This is John Valentine, and we're doing a uh, men's study in the uh, church cafe Saturday morning, 915, and we're going through the book of Exodus. Thanks, guys. All right. Come on. Let's give our small group leaders a thank you and a hand. Thank you, guys and girls. And we couldn't do what we do on Sunday without our dream teamers. We couldn't do small groups without our small group leaders. Uh, thank you guys so much for serving the Lord. Well, hey, uh, let's pray and get right into the message today. God, thank you so much, Lord, that you've given us this message today, God, because you love us, and God, you, um, you have a word for us to encourage us and grow us. So, Lord, I pray that no matter how long we've been uh, serving you, whether a long time or a little bit of time, God, that we would just open our hearts right now to what you are speaking to us today. God, I just pray for a fresh word from your Holy Spirit to speak to us today. And everybody said, amen. amen. All right. Well, we're in a series called Our Mission Through the Parables, where we are taking a couple weeks here, and we are highlighting what is referred to as our threefold mission, which is to know God, to grow in faith, and to go make a difference. And we believe that is what God has called us. That's our purpose as believers and as a church. And you can abbreviate that down to, you know, we're called to know, grow, and go. And it's so important, I believe, church, that as we have gone through 2020 and we're coming into 2021, a brand new year, that this sermon series wasn't just some random thing we threw in before we get into the Exodus series in a couple weeks, just as a time filler. It really is so important that we take a couple weeks and really are reminded of what our purpose is here on earth, what we're created for, the reason why we're here, our mission uh, that God has given us. And it's, it's, you know, we kicked it off last week and we talked about how that it's so important that we, we understand that we're here to know God, to have a relationship with him. And he's our loving father. And we looked at the parable of the lost son to illustrate that. And then next week, we're going to look at um, our purpose being to go and make a difference. And we're going to look at the parable of the Good Samaritan next week. And today, we're going to look at that second leg of that threefold mission is to grow in our faith. And we're going to look at uh, the parable of the sower today. And so before we get into the parable of the sower, I want to kick it off with um, a passage in the book of Hebrews, which is towards the end of the New Testament. And it's in Hebrews 5 and a little bit into Hebrews chapter 6. But the reason why I want to include this verse today is because of the language in the verse. And I just, I just love how the, the Holy Spirit has inspired the Word of God and um, how it uses um, words to illustrate um, it, certain things that God wants us to grasp. And so in, in Hebrews 5, it says, In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ 
and be taken forward into maturity. Did you catch some of those words that the Bible's using to encourage us to be growing in our walk? You know, when we uh, come to know Jesus, when we come to know God and we, we begin this relationship with God through Jesus, that the Bible's saying that we, we, we all start as what the scripture refers to as an infant level. Like, have you ever heard that term, a baby Christian, meaning you've just received Christ? Can you guys remember when that happened, when you first received Christ? Don't ever forget that time. Don't ever forget that time that, that you came to Christ. And we were all considered like baby Christians or infants, you know, um, still on, on milk, not, not ready for the, the solid food yet, still on an elementary level. But what the scripture is saying is when we receive Christ, that we need to uh, understand that we're on this journey of faith and, and we have this faith and um, we, we need to uh, grow in our faith to, to move from milk to solid food or to move from uh, infancy to maturity. And that's this, this awesome journey that, that we're all on. And we're all at different levels and you never want to compare yourself to somebody else and you know, if, you, if you've been serving the Lord a long time, you never want to look down on somebody. And if, if you're at, at a beginner, beginning level in your faith, you never want to idolize somebody else. But you just want to be inspired to say, you know what, God has called me to know him and to be in relationship, but to continue to grow in my faith. And so that's what we're talking about today, everybody, is that how important it is to grow. And so today what we're going to do, we're going to look at this uh, parable of the sower, which is actually in uh, three Gospels. It's in the book of Matthew, it's in the book of Mark, and it's in the book of Luke. Um, and so I chose the book of Mark today. And, uh, but no matter what book you read the parable of the sower out of, what happens is, is Jesus tells the parable and then he explains it. And I love that about Jesus because he wants us to, to understand um, his teachings. And so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to read through the parable of the sower, and then we're going to read Jesus' explanation of the parable of the sower, and um, we're going to kind of stop and break it down and, and, and talk about what I'm calling today, what I really believe the Lord is, is giving us today, four hindrances to our spiritual growth, what could be four hindrances to keep us from growing spiritually, but also the keys to overcome those hindrances. So y'all ready for this? Ready? All right, well, let's get into this in the parable of the sower according to Mark chapter 4, verse 1. Follow along with me, and it reads this way. Again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat, and he sat in it out on the lake while all the people were along the shore at the water's edge. Can you just for a second, just picture that. There's so many people that Jesus gets in this boat and he just kind of goes out a little bit. And that kind of was his platform, his pulpit. And everyone was on, on the seashore listening. And so verse 3, it says, listen. Okay, now here's the beginning of the parable. Listen. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, now you're going to see four different types of soils which represent four areas of our heart. Listen to this. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow, but when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants so that they did not bear grain or bear fruit. Verse 8, still other seed fell on good soil, and it came up, grew, and produced a crop, some multiplying 30, some 60, some 100 times. And then Jesus said, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. Then the scripture goes on to say that they were kind of wondering, you know, what that meant. And so if you jump down to verse 13, Jesus actually explains the parable that he just shared with his disciples. So what we're going to do is instead of reading the whole explanation, we're going to read uh, part by part. We're going to stop 
and I want to share what I believe the Lord is giving us today is what this represents as potential hindrances to our spiritual growth and also the keys on how to overcome them. So let's go to Mark 4.13 where Jesus begins to explain the parable of the sower and it said, Then Jesus said to them, the disciples, Don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? And now here he goes. He's going to explain it. The farmer sows the word. So that seed represents the word of God. Some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. Okay, so this is the first illustration that Jesus is making is that is that when, when, when the word is sown, when the word is going out, that some of that seed is falling on the path, and it's unlike other areas of the soil, because this is a path, you can see that it's been, you know, uh, frequently uh, traveled, and it's hardened, and it's trodden, and, and uh, animals have walked on it, and people have walked on it, and so what happens is the seed falls on that path, and it can't go into the ground because it's so hard, so it's just laying on the surface, so the birds come, and they just take it away, and so that seed can never grow. Man, that's a hindrance. That's a hindrance, and so what does that represent for us today, church? I want to give you the first hindrance to spiritual growth, and I believe it's represented by the path, and it's this, a hardened heart. I believe that there are times when we as children of God, as believers, that we can have areas of our heart that have been hardened for several different reasons. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that your whole heart is hardened towards God. It could, but I believe that most of the time we all can relate that we love God and we know God loves us, but we could have little pockets or little areas of our heart that are hardened because of these different things. I believe sometimes we've, we've gone through life and we've been hurt or wounded by people, what people have said or done to us. So we could have hardened areas of our heart because of hurts. We could have hardened areas of our hearts because of just real disappointment. I mean, just, you know, we had expectations and then this happened and I'm just really, I mean, I, I've had devastating disappointment. How about just life circumstances? I think sometimes because of things that happen, we can become cynical and we think cyn cynicism could be a mindset, but I think it's a thing of the heart. I think it's, it's, it's where we get to a place where that cynicism, cynicism just kind of is camped in a place of our heart, causing that hardness. Um, I, I also believe it could be a bitterness, um, a, an, an issue of unforgiveness, that, that there's been a relational thing that's happening, and um, we, we haven't taken steps to resolve it, or maybe we have, and the other person isn't willing, and all those things can leave us with, with hard areas of our heart, and I think many of us can relate to that. Many of us can. And the Bible says this in Hebrews 12, it says, see to it that no one falls short of the grace of God, and that no bitter root, can you say this next word, grows. Can you say that again? That no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. Let that verse sink in, everybody. You know, I've, I've read this verse, I've seen this verse several times, and i got to be honest with you that many times in the past when I've read or taught on this verse, I, I have focused on the word bitter root. And this time as I was studying, the Lord had me focus on the word grows. Isn't it interesting that the word of God says that inside me, inside my soul, inside my heart, that bitterness can what? Grow. It can grow in me. Wow. I think that many times we are on the receiving end of some disappointment. And if we don't deal with that, it can allow 
pockets and areas of our heart to become hard. And church, can I just say this? God wants all of our heart. God wants our heart that he can grow his things in our heart. Come on, right? And if we have areas of uh, of a hardened heart that the Bible is saying that things like bitterness, grudges, resentment, anger, hatred, unforgiveness, they're not just there. They can be growing. And can I tell you, if that stuff is growing in my heart, it's occupying space that God could be using to grow his fruit. Amen? Are you catching this? How, how things in our life can just can just really hurt and wound us. And, and God's calling us to, to understand that, church, this can affect our spiritual growth. Like, how often are we so consumed with, with our hurts and disappointments that even though we love God and we know God loves us, that it's been a hindrance to us growing past some places of infancy and getting to maturity. Amen? And so let me give you the key to when we are experiencing places in our heart that have become hardened, I believe it's this. The key is surrender. I believe the key is surrender. And what do you mean by that, Mark? What, what do you mean that when I have areas in my heart that, that, that have been you know, hardened, what do you mean by surrender? I believe that, that God wants us to get to a place that we recognize that we have these areas. And just sweeping them under the rug or hoping they go away doesn't normally work. But we have to get to a place in God to say, you know what, God, I admit. I, I admit, I, I, have, I, I love you and I know you love me, but I have some hardened areas of my heart because of fill in the blank. <laughs> you know, things that have happened in my life, things that I've done, things that have been done to me. And I understand now that, man, that can be the soil for bitterness and, and junk to grow, but I want your, your fruit to grow in my life. And, and so we need to surrender to him. We need to, to let his love into our life. We need to let his healing in our life. And as you can see, I got, I got some stuff from my garage today to kind of illustrate some things. And um, I got a couple tools for each one of these. But, man, I couldn't help but think of this one today. Um, can you guys see this? Like, this is a kind of a scary looking tool. Okay? I call it my spiky thing. My spiky tool. But, um, you know, I, I have, you know, my flower beds and my mulch beds and all that around my house. And normally not in the spring because everything's kind of moist from the spring rains. But around the summertime, July, when everything's getting baked on, you know, things get kind of hardened. And there's times where I just get my spiky thing out and I'm just going around like, and I'm just kind of tilling up the soil. And you're like, Mark, what does that have to do with healing? Doesn't that hurt? Wouldn't that hurt you? How's that healing? Well, you know what? We have to understand that when we start surrendering to God, there might be some uncomfortable things we might feel, but it's all good because God wants to work in our life. What do I mean by some uncomfortable things we might feel? You know what? We might need to have a courageous conversation with somebody in order to get that healing. We might have to offer, God, I'm tired of holding on to this bitterness. I want to give you this bitterness. I want to forgive that person. <laughs> you know, I, I, I need to sit down with a friend and just let them speak into my life. You know, I, I got some blind spots in my life, and I, can't, I, I just want someone to speak into me. And maybe I need to sit down with, with, with a family member. Maybe I need to sit down with a counselor. Maybe I need to sit down with a mentor or a trusted friend and just... just let truth come into me. Because how many of you know, I really believe this, and, and, and Deb and I really um, share this a lot because we believe in it so much, because we, we want people to experience healing in their life. But we believe that most of the time, listen to this, most of the time when you've been hurt or you've experienced a disappointment in your life, most of the time Satan will come and try to, watch this, he'll try to come and attach a lie to that area. Okay? Like, let's just say somebody did something to you and you were hurt by that. Okay, that's the hurt. But then Satan wants to take advantage of that situation and say, oh, this is a wonderful time for me to start lying to them that they're really not loved anyway. They don't matter anyway. People are always going to let you down. Oh, don't get close to people. Oh, don't forgive that person. They don't deserve it. See all the lies that can happen just from one disappointment? 
And so when we surrender to God, yeah, church, listen, there might be some uncomfortable things we feel, but that's God's process to take us through a process that he can love on us and heal us. And you know what? Another thing I thought of um, when it comes to, to healing the hardened heart is this thing, right? Come on, man. Just, just some water. And you know, the Bible refers to water as, you know, the water of the word. And he wants to lead me by still waters. And, and I believe that's what God wants to do. He wants to till up the ground a little bit. Man, it might be a little uncomfortable, but then he wants to water and, and, and bring us his love and heal, heal our hearts. Isn't that true? Look at this verse in Ezekiel 36. It says this. It says, I'm going to give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Amen. Well, let's look at the second one. In verse 16 of Mark 4, it says, Others, like seed sown on rocky places, hear the word and at once receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Hmm, what's the hindrance here? Well, one hindrance is a hardened heart, and I believe this, this rocky soil represents hindrance number two, which is an indifferent heart. An indifferent heart. What does it mean that I can have places in my heart that are indifferent? What does that mean? It doesn't mean all of your heart is indifferent. It doesn't mean you're a terrible person. It just means we can have pockets, areas where we have just become uninterested. I've become complacent. I've become apathetic. I've become idle. It's kind of like I'm okay with okay. I'm okay with mediocrity. I'm okay with just, it, I'm just not interested. Like, I'm, I've asked Jesus in my life, and I know I'm going to heaven. Why put the effort in? Why put extra effort in? I'm, I'm going to heaven. Why grow? I mean, growing's not a necessity to get into heaven. Being saved is a necessity to get in heaven. So why should I go beyond that? Church, sometimes we can just have an indifferent heart. And you're like, How did, what, what does this mean for, like, the rocky soil? Can I say, like, sometimes if you look at the ground around your house, how many of you know that sometimes you got some rocks in your soil, right? Can I say this? Do um, you know why sometimes we have rocks in our flower bed? Because we're letting them there. It's because, why should I put the extra effort in? I'll just cover it up with mulch or, eh, it's not bothering anybody, Right? Sometimes we just become indifferent. And so, you know, the Bible says in Proverbs, how long will you lie there, you sluggard? When will you get up from your sleep, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come on you like a thief and scarcity like an armed man. What is this verse saying? Ah, oh, just, you know, it doesn't matter. And what the Bible's saying is when we have an indifferent attitude, when we have a indifference in our heart it could lead to areas of poverty and scarcity now some people might say well you know is that just talking about economic poverty it could but i think it's talking about other areas of poverty and scarcity listen i think it, it can mean this it, it, if we don't care about spiritual growth guess what we can have spiritual poverty we could have spiritual scarcity and and god wants us to just care about growing from infancy to maturity because he wants to do so much more in us church like you know god still loves you and we still love god i mean we can stay there we can stay at that infant level and but but, but god wants to grow us because he wants to do things in us that are beyond our capacity to even think or imagine when we just say you know what i need to just understand that i've been indifferent and I need to grow because God wants to do something in me and he wants to do something through me. And so let me give you the key. I think the key is to be awakened. Awakened. You know, the Bible says a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest and poverty and scarcity come on you. So what's the answer? Awakened. 
I don't want to sleep and slumber through my spiritual growth. I want to be awakened. I want to understand that, you know, I, I, I can grow in God. And I think the, the, the things I have for that is this, you know, um, I, think, I think sometimes we just need to, you know, get the, where is it, where is it, my favorite tool. Let's see, where is it? Oh, here it is. This is one of my favorite tools here, right here. And, and th- yeah, okay, so, you know, when I'm working around the yard and I see, you know, I'm trying to plant something or I'm trying to just work the soil a little bit and I see a rock or something there that shouldn't be there, this is my number one go-to right here. This little hand pick, I love this thing. I use this thing all the time. Um, and so it's just great, you know, you're, you're doing something in the yard like, ooh, there's a big rock. Oh, man, bam, pull that thing right out. And you know what? I could say, oh, I don't care about that rock. Just it don't, it don't matter. No, the Bible says when there's rocks in our soil, the seed grows a little bit, but then it doesn't grow anymore because it doesn't have any depth. And you know what? That's because of indifference. Indifference will cause us not to have depth in our spiritual life. In church, God's calling us to go deeper. And that means we got to get the rocks out of out of the soil of our heart. And sometimes, you know what? Sometimes this is not big enough. I just got to get the shovel. You know what? Some of us, sometimes we need a backhoe. Whatever it takes, let's get the rocks out of the soil of our heart. All that means is let's not be indifferent, church. Let's really understand. Let's be awake and say, wow, you know what? I've just been settling for okay is okay. Just kind of kind of slide into heaven on my salvation and God wants us to grow. And so it's so important that we do that. You know, the Bible says in 2 Timothy 2, it said, Study to do your best to present yourself to God approved, a workman tested by trial who has no reason to be ashamed, accurately handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth. I mean, I can't, I can't think of a, a better way um, to, to, to grow in the Lord than, than small groups. And I know that, you know, we say it a lot around here and, um, you know, we, we, we worship God on Sundays to really accomplish that first part of our mission to know God and to pursue our relationship with our loving Father. But man, I think one of the number one ways we grow is to be a part of a small group. And I just want to, again, um, just, just to be, your, I'm going to cheer you on, man, and root you on just to encourage you to do your best to to get into a small group. Um, We hope that one of our small groups here at Cornerstone Chapel will fit your schedule. If for some reason it doesn't, I want to encourage you to still um, grab the Exodus book that we as a church, this is a church-wide thing that we're going through, and I want to encourage you, and I'm going to say it again next week, I'm just warning you, um, just to, man, get in a group and and, and get one of these Exodus books and go through this with us. Man, we're going to grow in the Lord. And there's three ways that you can get this book. Um, you can get the hard copy version of this book. Um, right here it is. And we have these available in our foyer. You can order them. You can order them online. Um, we also have the um, ebook version, which if you prefer to go through this in, uh, on your tablet, you can uh, buy that for a dollar. Um, and we also have the, um, the, the, the interactive PDF where you can get that right on our website and interactive because you can kind of do, do the work, fill in the blanks, uh, read the scriptures right, right through that, and that is free. Um, now, these, um, uh, we had a, a price tag of $5 on this. Just be, we were just trying to cover the cost of printing. We're not trying to you know, make money on these things, but um, I just want to encourage you that, and, and also give, give glory to God that um, there's somebody in our church, um, they, they just have caught the vision um, that our church is about growing in their faith, and they, 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 they're catching the vision of how important church-wide um, spiritual growth efforts like this are, and they're catching the vision of small groups. And so um, last week we had someone in our church that donated some funds um, to cover the cost of our book. So I just want to encourage you, if you have not received this, um, please go to our table. And there's uh, no cost on these books as long as that, that covers um, the books that are going out. So we thank God for that, that, that the vision is being caught. Amen, church? So, so let's continue to grow in the Lord and... and um, and it's so important that we do that. Let's look at the third one. 
Still others, like seed sown among thorns, hear the word, but the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Okay, so we've had the path that represents a hardened heart. We've had the rocky soil, which represents the indifferent heart. And now we have the thorny soil. Like, there's soil there. I can barely see it because there's all this weeds and thorns and brush and just all this stuff. And it's saying that, man, the seed can't take root. And what does this mean? I think hindrance number three, the, the thorny soil represents the cluttered heart. The cluttered heart. And church, can I just say that clutter in our life, clutter in our life can result in hindering our spiritual growth. Now you might say, what, what do you mean by um, a cluttered heart? You mean like my house? No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when clutter just gets into our life. Meaning this, um, a lot of times we have so much stuff going on in our life. We're so busy. We have so many things going on that many times we're just calling that clutter. It's like the brush, the thorns, the weeds, just all over the place that I can't even hardly see the flowers. I can't even see the, the things growing out there that I, that I should be seeing because there's so much stuff in there. And I think this really speaks to a lot of people in the body of Christ right now. Because a lot of things that clutter our life are good things. It, you know, it's like my hobbies, my, my, my work, and my family, and what my kids are doing. And church, those are all, you know, mostly just great things. And, but, but we just have to understand how to, to, to walk through life with the things that are in my life with not letting them clutter my life so much that it affects my spiritual growth. The Bible says in Luke 12, Jesus said to them, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in the abundance of your possessions. Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? So you know the key to this hindrance of clutter? It's declutter. It's declutter. That's the key. When we, when we recognize there's areas of my life that are just a lot going on, so much going on, it's like it's cutting into my Bible reading time. It's cutting into my prayer time. It's cutting into my being able to serve God time on a dream team. It's, being, it's cutting into my small group time. It's cutting into my church time. It's just cutting into my Jesus time. Um, I can't connect with people because I'm you know, so busy. And, um, and so we, we have to understand that you know, perhaps you know, God's calling us to take a step back and ask him, Lord, how can I declutter? How can I reorganize? How can I reprioritize my life? And, and uh, so, you know, the illustration I have for you for this is, um, it, it is sometimes, you know what, church, you just got to get your gloves on. You know, put those gloves on. And, uh, you know, sometimes you just got to get out there and start, start, You just got to get out there and start pulling, yanking those weeds up, you know, grabbing those thorn bushes and pulling them up. This, this, is, my, this is my nice little cute white bucket. This sits in our garage, and when it's time to do that, you know, I just come, and here, here's my little pad that I put on the ground so I don't hurt my knees, okay? And then I just get this tool right here, you know, and I just, I start, just, you know, just, just start, start pulling stuff, you know? Start pulling stuff that's cluttering up. My flower bed. You know what? Sometimes that doesn't do it, and you know sometimes you you just gotta get you gotta get the loppers out, man. You just gotta like you just gotta start cutting stuff down because there's so much stuff growing. I can't even see. I can't even experience. I can't even enjoy what what I should because there's so much clutter in my life. And we need to just let God do that. And you know what? Come on. Like sometimes we just gotta get the big boy out. Okay. Come on now, we just got to get the big boy out and just do some decluttering, okay? Now, I've already winterized this thing, so I'm not going to start it up. But, but um, anyways, come on, church, you know what I mean. Like, sometimes it happens in your own yard. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Like, just places we've ne neglected. And how many of you know, like, areas we neglect, man, it just grows up all over the place. Some of you are like, it's not my yard, it's my neighbor's yard. But anyways, um, so... But God wants us to, to just understand that 
man, things can clutter and, and hinder our spiritual growth. Check out this verse in Hebrews. It says, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. So just identify those things and make courageous decisions. Like, you know, it's not that this thing is bad, but I just have to, maybe not four times a week, but maybe one time a week. It's just like simple, simple, like, wisdom. You know, like, um, how can I make just good decisions? How can I be a good steward of my life and my time? We all have 168 hours a week, you know, and, and so we all, have, we all have equal amount of time, but God just wants us to take that evaluation of our life, um, you know, every once in a while. And, and I, I do what I call my dashboard. Like every quarter, I, I look at 12 things in my life and I say, how am I doing it with this? Grade myself, A, B, C, D, or F. And how am I doing with this? Like how am I doing with my time with God? Uh, about a B minus lately. Ooh, I need to, I want to pick that up to an A, a. You know, how am I doing with my family? And how am I doing with my attitude? And how am I doing with my finances? And how am I doing with my, just all the different things that matter to me. And, and it's just good, healthy stuff on how to do that. Okay, let's get to that fourth one, last one. Verse 20. Others, like seed sown on good soil, hear the word, accept it. Gospel of Luke says, perseveres and produces a crop, some 30, some 60, and some 100 times what was sown. Hmm. So what's the hindrance here? This is kind of an interesting one. I might, might throw you for a loop at first, but I'll, I'll, let me explain it. Um, the hindrance to spiritual growth here is the unfruitful heart. Unfruitful heart. So the path is the hardened heart. The rocky soil is the indifferent heart. The thorny soil is the cluttered heart. And the good soil is the unfruitful heart. Let me, let me explain. Because you might say, Mark, what do you mean? Like it says good soil and it produces fruit. What do you mean unfruitful? Well, even though the soil's good and it says it's producing fruit, I'm going to show you in Scripture that Jesus is calling us to make sure we're continuing in him. To continue to remain in him is the key to continuing to be fruitful. Because how many of you know you can buy the best fruit laid on your counter for a couple weeks, and how many of you know it's going to go bad, right? And so the hindrance to bearing fruit, the, the hindrance to this good soil and bearing fruit, is sometimes we can see fruit in our life. We're like, wow, I'm bearing fruit. That's awesome. And sometimes we're like, Okay, I'm done. I'm done. I've, I've produced my fruit. Now I'm done. Or I've done this. Now I'm just going to kick back on autopilot. And, and Jesus is calling us to remain in him, to continue in him. So we don't bear fruit and then become unfruitful. That we are like, like trees that are constantly bearing fruit and, and multiplying fruit. And, and the Bible says... In John 15, it says, I'm the true vine, Jesus said, and my father is the gardener. Now listen to this. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Verse 4, listen, look at this. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. So what it's saying, sometimes, sometimes a hindrance can be this. Sometimes we can, we'll go through a season of it just seems like, oh, life's great with Jesus. Everything's going good with God. And I feel like I'm, I'm just where I'm supposed to be with God. And like something can happen and, and, and we can just go into this season of unfruitfulness because we forget that we have to remain in Jesus. And so... Here's the key. What's the key to being unfruitful or having unfruitful times? Is to cultivate. To continue to cultivate my spiritual walk. You know, the last couple things I want to show you is this and this as far as cultivating. is uh, These are my hand pruners. I have some bigger pruners when the job calls for it. But, you know, sometimes there's certain branches, they're not dead at all. You know, they're, they're bearing fruit, but I know that, you know, if I, if I don't prune them, 
it's going to become unfruitful. And so many times we have to understand that we have to cultivate what God is doing in our life. God is getting you to a place that you see things happening. But that's not a time to kick back and put it on autopilot. That's a time to say, God, continue to cultivate my heart. That I continue to remain fruitful. Prune what you need to prune to make it more fruitful. And sometimes you just need some good old fertilizer, right? I mean, everybody knows what this green box is. Miracle grow. And that's what it means to cultivate. And I love the scripture in Luke chapter 13 that says this. The last verse I want to share with you today. It says, then he told him this parable. A man had a fig tree grown in his vineyard. And he went to look for fruit on it, but not, he didn't find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, for three years now I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it use up soil? Sir, the man replied, leave it alone for one more year. Watch this. I'll dig around it and I'll fertilize it. What does that mean? Just let me cultivate it. Let me take care of it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. And I think that's so important that church, we, we, we understand that we, we must continue to cultivate our relationship with God. Just having that daily time with God where we just get alone with God and we have our Bibles and perhaps you have a journal um, and we're just reading the word of God and, and letting that fertilizer, if you will, that, that living bread, that living water get into our souls by reading the word and, and having prayer time with the Lord, letting him work in us and minister to us, and all the things that we do to grow in God on that one-on-one, on -on -one, that personal level, is, is, is cultivating our relationship with God. How many of you know we, we have to take care of our most important thing, and that's our relationship with God? Amen? And so, this is how I want to close today. Um, I, I want to do something that we normally don't do. So if you're visiting with us today. We normally don't do this, um, but I really sense that um, this is how the Lord would want us to close today. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just challenge some of you. I'm going to invite some of you that if you saw yourself in any of these four areas, or even more than one, maybe a couple of these areas, that maybe you've said, you know what, I, through this message today, the Lord showed me that I Perhaps not my whole heart, but I do, have, I do have some areas that my heart has become hard because of life. And I need to surrender to him today and let him heal me. Um, you know, maybe it's just, I, I, man, I, I just didn't realize I was indifferent. And I was just kind of, you know, okay with okay. And how God really wants me to grow and, and do some awesome things in me. And maybe it's clutter. Maybe you're like, man, I do need to, like, just really look at my life. And, uh, you know, God needs to help me get get my life in order and or maybe it's just you know cultivating maybe maybe the lord's calling you to really cultivate that relationship um that you have with him and so what i'd like to do is i just want to call you to the front today call you to the altar and um as you stand here um there's just let the lord minister to you and let the lord do his work in you and can god minister to you from your seat absolutely can god minister to you at home, those joining us online, absolutely. But I just, I just sense that today, that not me, but the Lord was calling us to do this, to, to make that commitment to him, say, God, that's me. That's me. That's, I can see that in my heart, and I don't want anything to hinder my spiritual growth. Come on, church, amen. I mean, if, if the Holy Spirit showing us something that could hinder our faith and our walk with him, man, let's, let's give it to God today. Let him... Let him minister to us. and So um, in a second, as the worship team just playing softly behind me, um, I'm going to pray and I'm just going to call you to the front. And as we do, I'm just going to say a prayer over you and, and uh, we will dismiss after that. So um, if, if any of those four, if any of those four speak to you, just begin getting out of your seat and coming forward. Perhaps you're joining online. Maybe you just need to stand up wherever you're at. But God, we just thank you for this message today that you as our Father are calling us and you're challenging us, God, to recognize the areas of our heart that have become hindrances to growth. And church, if that's you, if, if, if you have, um, if you identify an area of, of a hardened heart because of hurts and disappointment, would you just come forward right now? Uh, maybe it's 
indifference. Get out of your seat and just come forward. Clutter, cultivating. Lord, do your work in us. God, where we have been hurt and where we have hardened areas of our heart, would you help us to surrender today? Surrender to you. God, we surrender you to do your work in us. Sometimes it might feel a little uncomfortable. God, but would you do your healing work in us as we surrender? And God, for the areas where we've been indifferent, God, would you awaken us? Would you awaken us? God, that you want to do so much more in us. God, help us to look forward to that. God, that you want to do so much more in us. But it takes us being awakened that we've had areas of indifference. And Lord, for those that have a lot going on in life and they can recognize, yeah, I can see how that's affected my, my growth. And Lord, would you just give us the wisdom by your spirit to reorganize and prioritize our life, to declutter. And God, for areas of unfruitfulness, God, would you help us to cultivate, spend time with you every day. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And man, if there's anybody here today here on site, here online, and you have never given your heart to Jesus Christ and accepted his free gift of salvation because of what he did on the cross, I want to invite you today to invite Christ into your life. Ask him in by praying this prayer. Go ahead, wherever you're at, just say, Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for the opportunity to be saved, to have new life in you. Come into my life. Forgive me my sin. Make me your child. Forgive me. I want to serve you forever, Lord. In your name. Amen. I'm going to ask our prayer teams to just be available on the sides of our sanctuary today. If you would like prayer for anything, man, we want to just be there for you and agree with you in prayer. Um, if you're joining us online and you have a prayer need, let our host know and we would love to pray with you as well. Um, if you responded to the Lord in any way, shape, or form today in the message, we'd celebrate that. But we also want to resource you. Um, we want to invite you to pick up a uh, fresh start pack at our information center. We also have that digitally on our website if you're joining us online. So guys, thank you so much for worshiping with us today. Remember, you can Continue to sign up for small groups, order a t-shirt. Guys, we love you so much. Thank you for worshiping with us today. Thank you.